Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the crazy to happen in running this week. This week's stories include the first woman to run a marathon revealed, the Tevis Cup rides across California, and results from the Leadville Trail 100. The country's largest 100 miler, the Leadville Race Across the Sky, took place out of Leadville, Colorado this past weekend under fairly ideal weather conditions. Despite that the race saw roughly a 45% finish rate, it was Jared Hazen out front early on in the men's side under course record pace through Twin Lakes before the wheels fell off and according to the Leadville 100 Twitter page, he DNF'd himself. That's a new one. Ryan Smith soon assumed the lead and went on to win his first Leadville 100 in 1633. Although you may not have heard of the Rocky Mountain Runner, he's legit having placed eighth at UTMB four years back. On the women's side, Magda Boulay was able to keep ahead of Cat Bradley, who chased valiantly most of the way through. Magda took the W in 2018. Great to see these ladies running strong out there. Following up on Geminius's Grand Slam record attempt, it seems he struggled quite a bit with altitude at this one, ending up 7th in 1922 and losing quite a bit of time on Ian Sharman, who he was actually up on the record heading into this one. He'll wrap up the slam in a couple weeks at Utah's Wasatch 100. Next on to the Leadman competition, I first off have to give a shout out to pro mountain biker Yuki Akita from Japan who came to the US this summer to train for and compete in the lead band competition. He ran his first ultra with us back in May in Arizona and I was really rooting for him. He was in the lead of the entire series heading into the 100 mile run but ended up dropping at the 100k mark, Twin Lakes inbound with a pulled muscle carryover from the 10k run the Sunday prior. Ouch. Shout out to Dave Mackey for finishing yet another lead band. Next, we head to Sweden for the Ultravasen 90K. Jim Walmsley made his way up there post Sierra Zanal for his return to ultras post Western States. He was feeling pretty spry on record pace through much of the race before falling just shy at the finish, but winning handily in five hours, 47 minutes. The Akobo Mafian was close behind with Yosim Lance second, Johan Lance fourth, and Elav Olsen in fifth. Nice work, boys. For the ladies, it was Alexandra Morozova of Russia taking the win in 7-11. In Canada, Gary Robbins' premier event, the Squamish 50-50, took place with the Mako Show, C Money winning the 50 mile in 7:39, just a minute ahead of Nick Elson. Janelle Hazlitt was the women's victor in 9:13. The race that inspired the Western States 100 mile run, the Tevis Cup 100 mile endurance horse ride was this past weekend in California. Yeah, sometimes we report on horse rides here, people. Our good friend from Arizona, Susan Kramer, took on the event this year, along with 183 other starters, and finished the 64th running of the event. I think it'd be really cool to check this one out in person one year. Heck, it would be sweet to have runners taking on the course on the same day. Maybe that's one way around the lottery constraints. Craig? Luke Nelson got after it on an epic FKT in Utah on the Whirl or Wasatch Ultimate Ridge link up. The route is extremely technical, weighs in at just 36 miles but with over 18,000 feet of climb, and mostly is scrambling that he got done in a new best time of 15 hours, 44 minutes. Way to go, Luke. Ever try to stalk, um, I mean, search for someone on Ultra Sign Up to see their times or what they've been up to? Well, sometimes you might have noticed some names missing, even some high profile ones. One of those was brought to my attention this week, Camille Heron of all people. In a Facebook post, she shared why she's been scrubbed from the site. She says that it's related to comments and false reports posted by media online as to the reason she's not on there. Couldn't quite tell from her post if she asked Ultra Sign Up to remove her or if they did it on their own but she did hint at wanting some privacy in her life for her own decisions to race or not to race, so it sounds like she was asked to be removed. Here's something that is just a bit overdue. Nepal is tightening its standards for permits to climb Mount Everest. Before, all you needed was 11 grand and a pulse to head on up the mountain. But after several deaths this year, after people were stuck in a conga line above the red zone, they made some qualification standards and raised the rates. Good for you, Nepal. 
Mike Posner, a Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter, was in the midst of a transcontinental crossing of the United States when he was bit by a rattlesnake. He's now having to relearn how to walk in the hospital and is on the long road to recovery. Be careful out there, folks. The Appalachian Trail recently celebrated a birthday. Yes, it was officially completed on August 14th, 1937. Six Days in the Dome Redux kicks off this weekend. An event that was previously held in Alaska is now calling Wisconsin home at the Pettit Center. There are quite a few big names going for records from 12 hours up to six days, including my good friend, Anthony Culpepper. Shout out to Tony, who will be walking his way in true pedestrianism fashion, heading for an all walking record set by George Littlewood, I believe around 540 miles. You can find live results for the event at run6days.com. Results next week. This is an interesting story relating to the Pikes Peak Marathon thanks to Alex Nichols. Arlene Piper, 60 years ago, was actually the first woman to complete the full Pikes Peak Marathon, which makes her predate Catherine Switzer's running of the Boston Marathon in 1967. Alex shared that several women followed in her historic footsteps this past week by running the same route up and down the mountain, donning similar white outfits to that worn by Arlene back in the day. She's supposedly the first to have completed a sanctioned marathon. Pretty sweet. Speaking of Pikes Peak, I gotta go grab a plane flight to get on up there, but the next race in the Golden Trail series takes place this weekend. Stay tuned for Killian's attempt and Matt Carpenter's legendary record set back in 1993. It's gonna be good. And with that, thanks for tuning in to episode 159 of Outhouse News. The show would not be possible without the support of our Patreon contributors who help with the production of this show each and every week. Join the Patreon crew at the link below for as little as $2 per month. Huge shout out to our $50 level supporters, Squirrels Nut Butter, Brian Sands, Base Medical Ultra Marathon Medical Care Online Course, Michael Durkin, Sean Trujillo, and the Twisted Fork Ultra out of Park City, as well as our $25 level supporters, Bluebird Running Company, Josh Goldstein, Carrie Savage, Renee Feint, Casey Carter, and Jeff Holbrook. Thanks for checking out the show, and we'll see you next time. If you have crazy stories to share or a question or feedback for the show, please leave a comment below. And finally, if you'd like to own this custom pair of Jam Jam's pineapple sunglasses, complete with a signed certificate of authenticity, check out the link in the description. Happy week.